it was year 2009 vijayawada where i was commanding ncc ncc uh, unit there just 60 kilometers from vijayawada there's a place called uh, news viru and that was selected as for us for, the, for us a training camp where you used to go regularly there's a beautifully uh, uh, constructed well built area where every facility available so we used to conduct this 10 days ncc camps for the students there while i had lot of uh, time available and i used to take these uh, children for visiting all the nearby important places there was to there was a fruity uh, massive factory then just about 4 5 km besides a massive temple there uh, there was a old age home and this was run by the missionaries uh, the st augustine's church uh, very well maintained uh, old age home in fact for the first time i had seen a functional and such a well maintained old age home i don't think anybody can run uh, besides the missionaries there was a beautiful mess there is accommodation separate accommodation and a well established hospital so people from the andhra pradesh and in fact uh, uh, nearby cities even their joining states who has been professional the prime age was staying there so after the visit of the children i started meeting the people and there i met mr m mahadevan he was living in uh, retirement in this senior citizen or the old age home very interesting man mr mahadevan inspired me with his approach towards life he himself a hindu is staying in a christian missionary and helping everybody in his very advanced age when his children are well settled and uh, now nothing to do with him today i am going to talk to you what he told me because it has got it had the lasting Im- Im- impact on my mind He tells me that he told me that uh, in the year 1978 one evening he was going up a hill near Matunga uh, sunk in uh, though quite oblivious of the surroundings with rain uh, pouring on his head there was a purple flower in the pl- uh, in the plant in the cleft in the rock the eye registered it but his brain didn't being otherwise engaged in some other thoughts he said he sat on the rock and looked back uh, at the flower he said i pondered when i was looking at the flower does a plant Okay, why uh, this, does a plant have a flower why does a plant has a flower this thought and then he explains that the flower is the sexual part of the plant like some animals flower exude a powerful seductive odor when ready for mating this attracts a multitude of bees birds and butterfly to join in a uh, saturnalism rife of fecundation all biological biology students i'm sure they can understand it much uh, better and in case the odor fails to attract the uh, uh, flower also have a different color and produces honey that is it tries every device to get itself fertilized what beautiful pattern and variegated uh, hues in the flower and <laughs> flower that remains unfertilized it continues to emit a strong fragrance for a long eight days whereas once impregnated 
the flower ceases to exude its fragrance. What uh, uh, the fragrance? What a beautiful explanation, and what a wonderful activity. After fertilization, he goes on. The flower uh, ceases to exist. It drops off and in the uh, place appears the green stage of the fruit. When the seed which contains the immortality of the plant is ready for propagation, the fruit which contains it undergoes a remarkable change. It changes color, it emits a scent and it has an inviting taste so that of these qualities may attract a bird or a beast to come to the fruit. Pick it and eat it. The seed is enclosed in a hard shell and is often unpleasant to taste. So the eater of the fruit drops it. And down comes the rain. And from the seed comes a replica of the plant. The huge banyan tree is contained in a seed which can be packed thousands to an ounce. Wow! Unbelievable! Unimaginable! The blueprint is there in the, is there in the tiny seed. And given the right condition, the banyan has reproduced itself. Now he says, my friend, Am I to understand that the plant that has neither brains nor a nervous system thought up or evolved this intricate system of propagating itself? No, never. Even a Nobel Prize winning scientist cannot produce a leaf or a blade of grass in his laboratory. Impossible. It is not the plant as we see it that is producing this marvel. A power beyond our comprehension is manifesting itself through the plant, through, uh, through the bees that pollinate its flower. Through the birds that eats the fruit and disperses the seed and as I uh, the observer who is overwhelmed at, uh, by his sudden and unexpected insight into a mystery of life. Now here comes the point my friend. The non-believers or the agnostics will go along with Mahadevan, Mr. Mahadevan up to this point but no further. When he takes what he calls the quantum leap beyond rationality, we prefer to stay back on firmer ground. Why should a thinking human being abandon the one thing that differentiates him from the animal world? His facility of reasoning. And since Mahadevan, Mr. Mahadevan was deeply involved in the functioning of this uh, old age home senior citizen uh, missionary uh, run campus he was quite aware of the uh, Christian literature and he quotes uh, Saint Augustine he says my mind is in a swift flash of perception attained the absolute being the ultimate and one reality. All that is, then verily I saw and understood. I could not sustain the sight of infinity and eternal reality. It was a glimpse, transient, a second space. Beautiful. My friend, in the uh, battle of the believers and the agnostics we end up being where we were believers would have have us fly across to God 
on the magic carpet of faith whereas the agnostics would like us like a solid concrete bridge of reason to cross over uh, from the known to the unknown i can only say that till then believers religious mind must be left to them and the agnostics doubt must remain with them as far as we are concerned we must continue exploring and exercising our intellectual faculties thank you very much